Hi Year 9 and welcome to your second lesson of the topic the living world. So last lesson we looked at what an ecosystem is and we looked at examples of ecosystems in the UK. So this lesson we are going to look at global scale ecosystems. So the title for today's lesson is what is a biome? Your learning objectives are to define a biome describe the distribution of the world's biomes and to create an information page and answer a range of questions about the different biomes. So before you begin this lesson, there will be an activity for you to complete on such a one, um, either a quiz or a word wall activity. So please, can you make sure that you've done that before you start this lesson? Take a second to write the title and date, press pause and just press play again when you've done that. OK, so geographical terms. Last lesson, you created a definition for an ecosystem. Um, so today we need to develop or create an eco a, a definition for a biome. So I want you to add this definition to your glossary that you made last lesson. Have a look through the information in blue, which one is for an ecosystem, which is for a biome. You need to write down just the biome in your glossary. So a biome is a global scale ecosystem such as a tropical rainforest or deciduous woodland or polar regions. So there's a range of biomes across the world. We've got polar regions at the North Pole and the South Pole in Antarctica. Below them and just above them in the Southern Hemisphere, we've got the tundra. Um, below that, if we're working down from the north, below the tundra, we've got the boreal forest, which is sometimes called the tiger forest. And then we've got temperate forests. So the UK, for example, which is also sometimes called deciduous woodland. It was called deciduous woodland in our first lesson. Um, grasslands, so we've got temperate grasslands and tropical grass, grasslands or savannas. Deserts and tropical rainforests as well on the equator. So what do these biomes actually look like? So this is a picture of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. And this might be how we would normally imagine the rainforest to, to look like from, from a bird's eye view. However, the Amazon rainforest or parts of the Amazon rainforest also look like this. So after deforestation, after the trees have been cut down and the soils are exposed, the soils um, in the Amazon rainforest are orange because they've got, they contain quite a lot of iron. Um, so we get landscapes like this in the Amazon rainforest as well. And this is also the Amazon rainforest, which is also part of the tropical rainforest biome. So this is an area that's used for growing crops. So we wouldn't necessarily imagine a landscape such as this to be part of the tropical rainforest, um, but it is. And again, tropical rainforest biome. And Manaus, again in the tropical rainforest biome. OK, so temperate forest. So we've, I'm pretty sure everyone has been into a temperate forest or an area of temperate forest woodland in the UK. So this is what it looks like. But the temperate forest biome can also look like this. And again, the temperate forest biome. So London, we wouldn't necessarily think about London as being part of the temperate forest biome. However, it is. And deserts. So we might imagine hot deserts to look like this, um, but not necessarily like this. But again, this is the hot desert biome. And again, the hot desert biome. So. Can anyone think where this might be? So Las Vegas. So what's the relationship between climate and biomes? So you can see from this map here that the biomes are approximately in rows 
around the world. So latitude, distance from the equator, is the main thing that makes these different areas of the world different. And the main factor controlling where these biomes are is something called the Global Atmospheric Circulation System. So if you've chosen to do geography for GCSE, you will be looking at this in much more detail. But the Global Atmospheric Circulation System distributes heat from the equator, where the sun hits the equator at quite a short angle, so it's very, very hot, and that heat gets distributed towards the poles. So where hot air rises and sinks, we get these different biomes. At the equator, where it's hot, hot air rises and creates an area of low pressure. When that air has risen and it cools again, it becomes more dense and then it starts to sink. It starts to sink around 30 degrees north and south of the equator, which is where we start to get hot deserts. Tropical rainforest biomes are found on the equator and hot desert biomes are found where the air sinks further north and south. OK, so the UK, we have a maritime climate. So we have a maritime climate because we're affected by the North Atlantic drift. As well as latitude, there are lots and lots of other different factors that play a part in creating these particular, these particular biomes and what they're like. OK, so your first task for today, using the information on the map of the world's biomes here, can you copy and complete questions one to four on the right hand side? The missing words for the gaps are in black towards the bottom of the screen. When you've done that, can you move on to describe where the other biomes are located and to include the names of continents and country? You might find it useful to use the information pages on Satchel 1 for this as well, page 1 and 2. So pause the video here. It'll take about six minutes, five or six minutes, depending on how quick you write. And press play again when you've done that. OK, so we are now going to move on to have a look at temperate forests and hot deserts. So where are temperate forests found? So the area in pale green on the map. In the northern hemisphere, they're found just south of coniferous forests or boreal forests, taiga. And just north of the Mediterranean biome, also called chaparral, so the red area. It's the second largest biome in the world. We can say that they're found approximately between 25 and 50 degrees north and south of the equator. So hot deserts, where are the world's hot deserts? Do you feel like you could name many of them? Do you feel like you could name even more than two hot deserts or three? So we mainly find hot deserts to be around 30 degrees north and south of the equator. So when I mentioned earlier about air rising at the equator and then sinking 30 degrees north and south, it's, the, it's those areas where we tend to get hot deserts. And your main task for today. So what you need to do is read through the information on Satchel 1. There's information about temperate forests and hot deserts. Choose one of them and you are going to create an information page using no more than 10 words. So you will need at least half a page in your book, half a page to a page, depending on how big you want to make it. So read through the information, pick out the, the key words and choose the most important words to write down on your information page that most accurately represent that information that you've read about either one of those biomes. You'll need to add a title onto the top of your information page or you could write it as a spider diagram if you choose to do it that way. 
You can use very simple pictures, but you won't be you won't be spending any longer than 10 to 15 minutes on this task. Try to include some information about climate and some information about plants and animals. And your stretch activity is to include further information about abiotic components, food chains, food webs and nutrient cycling. Pause the video here whilst you do that and then press play to move on to an extension task and a final word about submitting your work. OK, so you will need to submit your work for this lesson to your teachers when you've finished. These here are some extension questions to answer in your book or on paper if you've done your work on paper. The questions range from easy to more difficult. It'd be fantastic if some of you had a go at these as well. So remember to submit your work when you're finished. And next lesson, we will be moving on to have a look at the Mediterranean biome.